What's up guys, welcome back to the third installment of the 10 worst contracts in the NHL. Now hopefully I'm back for good, but today we'll be counting down the worst contracts in the league as of 2021. So without further ado, let's get right into it. Number 10, Brennan Gallagher. Going into the first year of his new 6 year $39 million deal signed last October, I already have a feeling this one will take a turn for the worse. With a $6.5 million cap hit on an already cap heavy team, this one could look really bad in a few years as Gallagher is already 29 years old. Even though he still has been scoring at a consistent pace with 14 goals in 35 regular season games last season, his power forward grinder style of play is ripe to fall off the rails like we've seen time and time again. Although it might be a little premature, I'm still going to throw him on this year's list at number 10. Number 9, Tucker Pullman. In one of the strangest deals signed this offseason, the Vancouver Canucks signed defenseman Tucker Pullman to a four-year, $10 million deal, giving him a cap hit of $2.5 million. Now, the cap hit may not seem outrageous, but no offense to Pullman, the dollar amount and the term is utterly ridiculous for his caliber of play. He struggles defensively as his last two years he had negative possession numbers, including being dominated in eight playoff games with a Corsi percentage of 39. He can't score offensively, he had one assist and zero goals in 39 games last year, and he's 28 years old and has shown no signs of improvement. Undoubtedly, this contract will end up buried in the minors at some point during the four years. Number 8, Drew Doughty. Now this one can be controversial on both sides, so we'll see how the responses are in the comments section. Doughty has 6 years left with an absurd $11 million cap hit. That makes him the second highest paid defenseman in the league, and doesn't take Bobby Orr's analysis to know that Drew Doughty is not a top 2 defenseman in this league, let alone a top 15. Now he is still able to put up points offensively and quarterback the power play, and he will be a nice compliment and mentor to LA's up and coming young prospect pool, but at 31 years old, at some point, expect him to fall off a Duncan Keith sized cliff, and by then the Kings better pray the salary cap has significantly increased. Number 7, Milan Lucic. This Lucic contract has been a permanent resident on this list since its inception, but in all honesty, it has really grown on me over the years. I don't know if I'm getting too soft at the tender age of 21, or if his $6 million cap hit doesn't look too bad anymore with just two years left. Especially when you consider his mentorship ability, slight rebound in play since leaving Edmonton, and his terrifying presence on the ice. Regardless, it's still not enough to get him off this list, but we can try again next year. Number 6, Kyle Ocpozo. If Lucic is a permanent resident, then Ocpozo should be his landlord. Not gonna lie, I almost didn't include his $6 million cap hit for the next two years on this list because I had no clue he was still playing hockey, let alone in the NHL. He scored a whopping two goals last year in 35 games, which is $3 million per goal if anyone's counting at home, but good for him for sticking it out in the league, and in fairness, Gretzky could come out of retirement to play on the Sabres, and everyone would still snore through their games. Number 5, Matt Murray. The man once protected over reigning Vesna Trophy winner Mark andre Fleury in the expansion draft, sorry Pittsburgh, we'll never forget that one, has officially fallen from grace. The Penguins didn't want to commit to him after his bridge deal, so they did what any logical team would do and ship him up to Boston, who gladly signed him immediately to a four year, $25 million contract for an AAV of $6.25 million, making him the sixth highest paid goalie in the league this season. In his first season in Ottawa last year, he recorded an 893 save percentage, which if you're wondering does not make him a top 6 goalie in the NHL, or probably even the AHL. This season will be a huge rebound year for him, or else he'll be right back on this list next year. Number 4, Eric Carlson. The highest paid defenseman in the league with his $11.5 million cap hit for the next 6 years has seemingly fallen off the face of the earth since the Carlson sweepstakes drove the hockey world nuts in the 2019 offseason. Now it's not entirely his fault as the team is a tire fire and even Jumbo Joe abandoned ship, but he did have his worst offensive season since his rookie year last year. At 31 years old, you don't exactly want to see regression with 6 years left on the deal, but at least the Sharks have a good prospect pool and will turn the team around soon. Oh my bad, that's the Kings, but one bad contract won't kill you, right? Number 3, Mark Edward Vlasic. Bad things come in pairs, I think, and what's worse than having the worst defensive contract in the league, having the second worst as his D partner. Vlasic used to be a stay-at-home defensive darling, but with a $7 million cap hit left for 5 more years at 34 years old, those advocates have suddenly gone silent. And to add some salt to the wound, Vlasic hasn't had a good defensive season since 2016. Number 2, Jeff Skinner. This monstrous 8-year, $72 million contract was signed on June 7th, 2019, and actually put him on this list permanently on June 8th, 2019. 
I feel bad for Skinner. Well, not really because he's making $9 million a year, but there's literally no way this contract was going to turn out good. In the best case of timing the contract world has ever seen, he scored 40 goals in his first season in Buffalo after the trade, and boom, this contract offer ends up in his inbox. Then he takes his foot off the gas a little bit, puts away the figure skates in the offseason, and now we're sitting at just 21 goals scored over the last two seasons with six more years to go. I would say there's no way this could get bought out, but Minnesota certainly proved that anything is possible. Number 1. Sergei Bobrovsky To nobody's surprise, Bob has to be the number one contract on this list. Just like Skinner, this was the worst contract in the league the day it was signed. He has 5 years left at a $10 million cap it, and he honestly would have been the third string last season if there were no strings attached. For the second highest paid goalie in the league, an average save percentage of 903 is simply not going to cut it, but I don't think he's too concerned living down in Las Solas and hitting up live on Sundays. So I'm not sure we can even expect better play from him next year. So who did I forget for this list? What would you have done differently? Let me know all those things as well as future videos that you'd like to see in the comment section down below. Toss a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys next time.